Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over actually uh, tuning the servo itself and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start playing around with the proportional values, the integral derivative uh, gain values and then I'm actually going to play around with the velocity and the acceleration as well and take a look at the um, at the response that's given out in this graph. So on the graph you can see the, the current and velocity, uh, position error and then the actual time on the graph is shown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go through uh, some parameters here. I'll just give you a look at a, at a typical uh, decent response first. So you can see here, right, that uh, this green line represents the uh, velocity itself, right, and then you can see that the uh, this guy here is uh, down for uh, positioning error. The uh, the actual blue guy, so positioning error was very very high at the start, and then it came down leveled to a certain extent as velocity leveled out, right, and then it was bounced around a bit. So when the green line is actually up here. The way this uh, server was tuned, the way the software works, is that we do a full clockwise turn, then we have a rest interval of 200 milliseconds, and then we have here a full anti-clockwise turn, right? So there's a ramp up to a set point, and then there's a ramp down, right? And then basically we go off and we try to get some kind of settling time then in itself, right? Uh, so it's it's just what I what I've done is I'm turning say say we've four thousand pulses coming out of the encoder so I have them forty thousand so we'll do ten turns ten full rotations uh, clockwise then rest for two hundred milliseconds then do uh, ten full rotations in the opposite direction then itself so what I want to do is I'm going to analyze this curve a little bit and I'm going to take a look right so what we were aiming for was one thousand and we actually got that which is very very good because we had down our velocity target set point so I would have sent this command to say I want you to accelerate up and reach this point here and as you can see this guy is actually very very good right then if we want to go completely say out of control we want to go very very bad right um, let me give you an example of that See this guy is going all over the place. Let me just okay. So you can see that the position error has just gone crazy. If we look, if we take away actually our position error and we look at our velocity profile, which is this green guy, we can see then that we've literally gone all the way up to one thousand four hundred. We have a set point which is supposed to be about here. So you'll see this number right. It's supposed to be about here and go perfectly all the way across. It was doing it for us previously when it was set up correctly, but then it just bounced all over the place. It just was a completely unstable system. So you'll see in this graph here, you'll see where you have uh, a system that is very unstable with a low settling time. Um, so it's an under damp system. Then this yellow line is an over damp system. Then we have a critically damp system. This blue line, and then probably almost the perfect response uh, in certain situations of this uh, magenta or purple line, right here, where it goes out and it just settles perfectly. So it it uh, it's very important to get the right kind of parameters. One one thing that's very important to note about this um, actual uh, rotor, it's not under load. So you can never ever tune a system. You can't just say I'm going to hook up this drive uh, to this new uh, servo motor. All the connections are the same. Uh, go, oh yeah, it's, it's a different motor slightly in terms of its power uh, and, and, and so on. So therefore what I'm going to do is um, just stick it on in, in any circumstance. It could be on, a, on the fan of a, uh, well, yeah, it could be on some kind of HVAC system. It could be on a robot whatever is, is going on, an agitator inside a, a vessel, I, it doesn't really matter. You, you have to do, you have to tune under load and, and you can't really escape from that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, I'm going to go back to uh, some parameters that were working for me and actually, no, I'll just run through here and we'll see how we get on. Okay, so we can see that we have a dramatically different graph again. We go back to what we originally had and then what I can see is that in the positioning error, right, it, it should really be down on this line here. A positioning error should always be about zero. So if I look up here, P0, 
30 right I can see that I have a positioning error where it goes, it goes up I'm not sure exactly what 16 represents or 16% or, or who knows exactly right but there is a positioning there I'd say that's actually in color pulses I'd say that it knows that in terms of its command position and its actual position it's 16 away of where it actually should be right so we can play around with that by say upping the proportional value But then we also have problems, actually you're right, the acceleration, sorry, I was just thinking there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock that acceleration up and see how we can get on. So we've improved a little bit, we're after coming down. Now the now the, the, the proportional value is kind of like my, my amplifier, right? So it's driving up my, my system response, right? So... What I have to do is then I have to put in the derivative of a value in order to try and calm this thing down as soon as it say it goes over its set point, right? So if to calm the guy down with the derivative value. But the integral term in these things actually kicks in to help you get near your set point. And that's that's really its main focus. So we're going to give it an actual value. That's a bit high, but this system is not under load see what effect it's going to have now beautiful see what we've done is we've we've literally gone up our position error is always going to be massive at the start right and basically what we're after doing then is we're after coming down and we're after kind of settling as much as we possibly could there's always going to be issues when you're ramping up and ramping down but this is very very nice now you can see it's got 99 1001 uh, 1002 was me <laughs> and me on the mouse so it's very 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 good response going on there one thing we have ignored is the current right so the current is basically up at a certain level it's up as to where it needs to be now this motor is actually down uh, to take an awful lot more right than uh, 240 milliamps right Again, this system is not under load but the best thing about this is, is that the whole idea of a response and power that goes to a motor is that it, it has to do with again with the position error right and the current will ramp up and down and is adjusted by the drive itself to only be what it needs to be if you're hitting your target numbers your target velocity right you don't care uh, if you if your motor it, 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 it because it's doing what it's supposed to do it will only draw more current if it needs to right so this is definitely uh, me trying to give across that this is positioning with torque it's the ideal torques to drive your to drive your system and only the torques that are actually required and necessary because if you give too much your rotor is going to spin way more than it needs to Okay, I'm just gonna what is the time? 8.30. Okay, uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to uh, start playing around with the actual velocity and then the acceleration itself and then kind of take a look at the actual profile. Okay, uh, so what I actually might do is I'll do that in the next video and um, yeah, I'll do that in the next video and then we'll see that uh, if, your velo if your actual set a set point value changes you also have to start playing around with your figures here also